Welcome back to the second video in this five video database design primer. Ready to have your brain exploded for the second time today? Let's get started. So I'm gonna try and take it just a little slower than the last video, but this is gonna be about database integrity. And I talked about this a little bit in the last video and this camera just looks a little too close. So I'm just gonna back it up a little bit. So in the last video, we discussed database integrity just a little bit, but in this video, I wanna go in much more depth. So let's talk about integrity. Database integrity is a thing we try to have in our database. Basically, it protects our database from breaking, having incorrect data, and so forth. So to make the whole concept easier and easier to discuss, they break it up into three categories. So the first one is entity integrity. The second one is referential integrity. And the third one is domain integrity. Now before we discuss the three categories of integrity, I want to discuss one thing you should always try to do when you're building a database. Always try to make things built off of singularity rather than plurality. I don't know. Like, so let me just, that made no sense. So let me just kind of describe it. If you have a table, you have a table name. So let's say it's user or users. And you probably wonder, whoa, 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 that is not singular, that's plural. Yeah, it's right, it is, it is plural. But the thing it's talking about is one individual thing. It's users, that is one thing. It's not users and customers. It's not users and professors or whatever. It's just users. So this talks about one thing. So the primary goal is to make everything atomic. So if you're wondering what atomic means, think of an atom a long time ago when we were not able to split an atom. Well, that basically described what we were trying to do with a database where we have chunks of information that aren't meant to be split. So you can't break this table up into anything more. You can't break it up. If it was like, if it was like users plus customers, well you could split it have users and a customer say we'll have two separate tables. That would be not, that would not be atomic. But since we have just users, it does make sense. It's atomic. It's only one thing. It's a basically just a general, it's, a, it's basically just a general entity. And then within here, we're going to have specific users. So that's one thing you need to know when we're making databases. So when we have columns, we make the column's title be about one specific thing. So, phone number, a first name, a last name. We generally want them to be things that are atomic. For example, an address, that's usually more not so atomic. Because if you think of address, you actually have a city, a city, a state, a street address. You might have an apartment number. Those are multiple things within that one column, and we want to avoid that. So that's the very first thing. Now when we're discussing entity integrity, that means everything needs a primary key. The primary key is used to keep everything unique. So you have basically an ID, which is a type of primary key that's known as a surrogate key. We talked a little bit about that in the last video. Surrogate keys are just random numbers that are generated by the database that have no real world value. If you do pick a natural key, you want your natural key to be something that doesn't change. So the primary key doesn't change. And then we have a couple other rules. Well, for one, it's not null. If you remember from the last video, null means the lack of a value. So there is no value there. So you can't have a primary key that doesn't have a value. If the email is the primary key, every single person or every single account is going to need an email. The third thing is that it should be unique. You shouldn't have two entities with the same primary key. If we have a guy here and a guy here, 
and this guy's ID is 106, and this guy's ID is 106, the database will assume that these are both the same people. And that's not the case, because there's two of them. So these are known as constraints. It's basically setting rules for the database that's saying, don't be null, or everybody has to be unique. And that's just some examples. There's more constraints you could add. For example, there are referential constraints, which is what we'll be discussing now. Referential constraints connects tables. So when you have two tables, Call from when we have two tables and there's some kind of connection, we'll have a primary key in this table, a primary key in this table, and then one of the tables will reference the other table. So if this is uh, users and comments, well the comments is going to reference this table. So I'll have a foreign key that references that primary key to say that this comment was posted by this user. And that's all done using the primary key. That's the connection. Now if we want referential integrity, we have to protect that using constraints. Constraints are basically rules that don't let you do certain things to destroy the database. So for example, if we did not have constraints and we had this foreign key connection, well then we can make it to where if we delete this person, he's off of there, and this comment still exists. That doesn't make sense because a comment can't exist without somebody posting it. So then we're going to have all these comments like, wow, and it's going to be by no. <laughs> we don't want to see these kinds of things on a website or application because that's not good at all because you don't know who said it. This is bad. <laughs> so that's referential integrity. The final one is domain integrity. Domain integrity is basically giving a list of possible options for columns in a table. So if you think of a table, we could have a table for the uh, users, just like this table up here, but I'm just going to draw so I have more room. And I'm just going to list the columns this way, so don't think of these as rows, we're just listing what the columns will be. So the table is a users table, and we might have a uh, usr underscore, then user underscore ID, underscore PK. So basically, that long nonsense is the prefix of user table, the user ID, and then it's the primary key. That's one column we might have. Then we might have the, uh, the name. Username. And if you wanted, you could break name up into first name, last name. So that way it'd be more atomic, if that's something you would like to do. User password. So these are just some examples of uh, columns that you could have. And if you notice, I did this a little differently, because normally I'll draw a table out like this and put the columns up here and then rows across this way. Well, this design is actually pretty common. So basically we're just setting all the rules of what the the rows are going to have, but we don't actually write them in. This is known as basically an entity relationship diagram. So that's E R D. Entity relationship diagram. And you'll see these connected to other tables. So you might see something like this. And you'll see big charts where it'll have the table and the columns for that table and different types of relationships between tables. That's an entity relationship diagram. But in this situation, we're going to implement domain integrity by preventing certain entries into these columns. For example, the username. We can make, we can make uh, domain integrity by saying that everybody's name should be characters. It shouldn't be a data type that is not a character. So if if we wanted to do that, we would give it the, the data type of string, for example. When we, when we make it a string, it's not going to allow people 
to put the data type that's numbers or the data type of dates or the data type of true and false. It might be able to store those values if, if you don't put enough constraint. For example, it can be a string, but that string might say true. Whereas when it's in, when it's in quotes, we're running out of space here, when it's in quotes, it's known as a string. And we'll get more into the specific types of um, data types really soon. But for now, just know string is with like, the quotes. But this very well could also be true without the quotes. And if that's the case, then this is not referring to a string, but this is a Boolean, uh, Boolean which is either true or false. So that's what I'm saying. You want to make sure it's the right type. You don't want to allow number data types or Boolean. You want it to be string. A couple other things you can do is you can say how many characters you want it to be and so forth. So for an email, you should be able to check like, well, is it at least three characters or whatever the shortest email length is? You can try to go in more depth and make regular expressions with software to check your email. You want to add domain constraints that prevent people from putting garbage in your database and making your database all messed up. You can also do conditional statements to test data. So you can say if the sex that the person enters is either M or F, then insert it. But if it's something else like, oh, like cats, well, you don't want to put that in there. So you can say, well, don't insert it. That's an example of uh, just some different types of integrity that you can put in your database. You're a dork. So yeah guys, that's all I have to say about integrity. So thanks for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace. And be sure to subscribe. Ow, my ankle. I just kicked the wall. Be sure to subscribe.